Hey guys, welcome back to Dose of Joy. This is part two of the exchange series. So in this video, we'll be focusing more on now that you've decided to go on exchange or you're in the middle of applying, what you can actually expect when you do go on exchange. If you are still undecided whether to go on exchange or not, I would really recommend checking out part one because that's where we'll be discussing whether exchange is for you as well as other information about exchange. Okay, so let's begin part two. First, I just wanted to talk about culture shock because everyone talks about culture shock. People describe culture shock as, you know, going into a new culture and then being so surprised about the differentness of that particular culture, um, which I actually did not get. I got the reverse culture shock because when I went to Amsterdam, things were so similar in a way to Melbourne that I was shocked because of that. The trams were similar the people had similar humor. It, it was just very strange. And I know I had a very comfortable segue into Amsterdam because everyone speaks amazing English and th there was just no language barrier and no resistance in talking to people. If the country that you want to go to does not speak English as its main language or second main language, just be prepared that you will find it very hard or at least harder to communicate with others. Miscommunication will happen. Phone calls will be harder to have sometimes because you just don't understand what the other side of the line is saying. And this is hard in the moment, but over time you will get used to it, you will learn the language and it will become easier. Trust me. And I say this with confidence because even though I went to Amsterdam and they spoke perfect English, I also traveled to many different places where they did not speak English and I still managed to have a great time and communicate. Just a bit more slowly. Okay, so now I've talked about the culture shock going to that country and maybe even during, but just you wait until you come back to your home country and that culture shock is even high, like it's up here. I just can't emphasize how weird it was coming back. Because first of all, time flies when you're on exchange. You'll definitely be able to relate to that. And suddenly you're in the last few days before you come home and people are starting messaging you and being like, oh, you're coming back, wow, amazing. And it, you can't comprehend it, it's not hitting you. When I got back to Melbourne, I was just shocked by being able to know where things were and navigating myself so easily. Because when I was traveling, I was lost maybe maybe 70% of the time I had to just guess where things were or ask people everything but coming back it was just completely different and it's very strange because when you come home things have changed but they've also stayed very much the same I got a new toaster that sort of shocked me and some things had been changed around the house but the main thing was that you know people were in the same jobs everything was the same but you've had so many new experiences in your exchange times that it's it's just very conflicting. So good luck with that. It's a very weird feeling, but you'll live. And now I just want to segue into, I don't know other languages and I'm really worried about that. So like I mentioned before, it can be very uncomfortable coming to a new country where they don't speak English. When I was in Spain, just arrived there, it was very difficult to communicate to other people. My Spanish wasn't great. Finding things in supermarkets were extremely hard. I, I even mixed up zucchini and cucumber and ended up stir frying cucumber. <laughs> But anyway, if you're stuck, that is totally fine. Rely on things like sign language, rely on Google Translate, rely on these things that are there to help you. I was lost and I ended up doing sign language with an old Slovenian man and it worked out so well. He just, we sort of just sign language together and yeah, no problems. You will be fine. Is there anything you regret? And just a side note, I've just come to realize that I don't really consider anything as regret because with whatever you end up doing, whether it be great or awful, you learn from it and that helps you not repeat the same thing again. But yes, I do have some sort of regrets. I think number one was how much time I was worrying about money issues, mainly because, you know, I'd go to the supermarket, check out the prices and be like, it's like 50 cents more expensive, no thanks. and. You know, that wastes time. I would have preferred, because I had saved up money, that I wouldn't have been so caught up in the scarcity side of things and just been happy to spend as much as I possibly could have in a very sensible way. Anyway, beyond that, I would also say that I didn't travel within uh, the Netherlands as much as I sort of wanted to because I was traveling to so many other countries that I ended up leaving Netherlands till the very end, which was not ideal. 
So please just explore your host country a little bit more because there's just so much culture that you can really learn from and really make this country your second home. And also another regret I think is that I over exhausted myself at times because I wanted to just do everything. I ended up saying yes and yes and yes to so many things and I ended up getting mentally burnt out a little bit. And yeah, just, just be easy on yourself. Take a break when you need to, because even though you, your mindset is that, I just wanna get as much as I can because I'm only here for a certain amount of time. Just be easy on yourself because you will find time to do it anyway. But yeah, I, I just don't think that anyone truly regrets exchange because there's just so much that you learn from it and it's a completely new experience. So why not? Why not go? Okay, so now this is just gonna be a chunk of my personal advice that I would have liked to give to my past self and also for you guys who are going on exchange now. First of all, there is no right way to do exchange. I sort of mentioned though in my previous video that exchange is sort of synonymous to traveling. That when you go on exchange, you're expected to travel and expected to visit a lot of different places. But that's not the case. And I know that a lot of students who have gone feel embarrassed when they say, oh no, I didn't really travel much. I just, you know, did it within my country. And that is totally fine. That is also exchange. That is your version of exchange. Don't attach other people's expectations of exchange onto yourself. Do exchange how you want to do it, that's it. And going back to expectations, people will expect certain things of your exchange, especially when you're gone and friends back home will ask, how is exchange? Oh my God, tell me all about it. What are you doing? And they're expecting, you know, like a whole list of what you've been doing. And that happened to me. People were bombarding me, you know, with, oh, it must be amazing. I'm, I'm so jealous. What are you doing over there? And in my head, I'm going, I have to work out immigration, <laughs> but you know, it's expected at the start, at during, that is going to be fantastic. And you put so much pressure on yourself to have an amazing time. Why? So besides fighting your own expectations of exchange, you also have to be strong and fight against other people's expectations of what your exchange is like. And another piece of advice for, especially you guys who want to go traveling around, is to space out your travel. I got a bit overwhelmed, I did a lot of things, and it just got to a point where things were just things. I saw things and was sort of desensitized from traveling. I'd done so much of it that I was burnt out from it, if that makes sense. So don't feel pressured to just keep traveling and keep doing things. You know, take a step back, deepen the relationships with the people in your dorms or in your university. There's so much to do. Another piece of advice is the first people that you meet on exchange won't necessarily be the people that you vibe well with most. I think there's a pressure though to immediately see some people that you sort of resonate with and stick with them for the whole exchange or stick with them because you're comfortable now, you've made friends. But I would challenge you to get past that uncomfortable stage of finding other people as well because you don't just want to settle, you really want to find your group and who you feel most comfortable with. So yeah, don't, don't feel like you have to stay with the same people at the start to the very end because chances are that won't happen. This next piece of advice though is something that I can say in hindsight but in the moment it is pretty hard to achieve which is to plan but be flexible. Meaning that if things don't go the way you planned, be flexible and accept what's happening and move around it and try and find a fitting solution. So for example, I was supposed to take a bus from France to Amsterdam overnight and the bus ended up being late and I had a connection to make in the middle. I was completely just, you know, sweating and stressing out because the bus was already late and I had a small gap in which I had to make the next connecting bus. And I also had to make it for the next day because the next day I was going straight into class. Okay, I, I was a bit full on, but yes, anyway. So basically I was wishing this bus to move faster, which it can only move at a certain amount of speed. I was, you know, stressing out. And in that moment, there is no point in stressing out because you can't change the situation. You can't wish the bus to just go faster because traffic was awful that day. So when things like that happen and there's no alternative solution, you're just going to have to accept it because stressing in that moment is just a waste of your emotional energy. And really, it's not the end of the world. You will survive, it will be okay, but it's really hard to tell myself in that moment. I would just said, screw you, Joe, screw you. Like, no, it's not okay. But it, trust me, it will be okay. Okay, another piece of advice is to just get as involved as you can in uni or things within that country. 
So think of things like volunteering or joining clubs at uni or doing something where there's a big community around it and where you can get involved in. This is such a great time to make connections, to meet new people and just to get out of your comfort zone and do things that you wouldn't normally do. And if your uni offers O week, please go, especially if there's activities that you know allow for social interactions and everything because this is where it's easiest to meet people everyone's sort of unsure what what's going on and everyone's really ready to just talk to other people and yeah and also for me in AUC there was um, a buddy program which is absolutely incredible if your university offers it please please say yes my buddy was Carolina and um, she actually came to Melbourne Uni this semester to do exchange and she's somewhere in East Coast now traveling and having the time of your life but yeah she was also another reason why I felt just so adjusted and comfortable in Amsterdam because she knew the ropes around Amsterdam she's lived there her whole life basically and yeah it was incredible would recommend another piece of advice these tips literally don't stop so you're, you're welcome. <laughs> please, please write your experiences down or capture them in some way that you can look back on. Write things like how you're feeling in that moment, what surprised you, what you've learnt, everything. Just something that you can look back on and think, wow, I've really developed since that time. Write about what you're scared about, meeting new people, what makes you uncomfortable. Yeah, would just recommend. And one of the last tips that I just want to share with you is to please approach exchange with a particular mindset. In particular, a mindset of curiosity, open-mindedness, and optimism. Curiosity because curiosity is a thing that breaks stereotypes. It's a thing that brings people together. It's just the thing that stops you from judging before you actually get to know something more. When things are different and you find it a bit weird, instead of finding it a bit weird and apprehensive, be curious. Ask the people why they're doing a certain thing, what that thing could mean. Anything to bring you closer to an understanding of why they're doing something. Secondly, open-mindedness. So this one is so important. You want to start with a blank slate and just be open to the experiences around you and not to say no too easily. You're in a different country and people do things differently from you, but if you're open to it, you might find that it's more fun than you expected it to be or just w different but in a good way. And finally, optimism. Like I mentioned earlier, things don't always go the way we plan. So if we can be optimistic and look at the silver lining and know that things will work out in the future, it will be fine. And just general packing tips, please pack light. I personally had just one medium suitcase, but um, that was very light compared to other people. You're only gonna wear like half of your wardrobe, not even. So just be smart about what you bring anyway. So I forgot a raincoat and I went to Amsterdam, which is just... <laughs> so yeah, anyway, my go-to travel items as well, portable charger, hands down, one of my most used items there, a good camera, just a phone camera will do and a big backpack I had my decent backpack that I brought everywhere with me was enough to do a weekend trip and not have to bring a suitcase fantastic please bring one and finally finally before we wrap up this video what happens beyond exchange I hope that when you come back from exchange you're gonna take the same independence the same desire to learn and to experience new things um, and your open-mindedness back to your home country and travel within your home country. I don't think this sense of novelty should be applied only to places outside of where we live because our countries have so much to offer and we've sort of become desensitized over our life. It's such a waste, such a waste. And I've, you know, really tried. So when I came back, I started going on walking tours in Melbourne. I've traveled to Cairns and I'm about to travel to Brisbane. There's just so much to do and I just can't recommend being a tourist within your own country enough. Okay, so now this is the end of the video, I promise. Hopefully I answered a lot of the questions that you had leading up to your exchange. And if not, please just message me, please comment on this video. Um, yeah, because I'm more than happy to help. So, I will see you in the next video. Bye!